Hello and welcome back to section 6.3 part 2. We are going to continue with vectors in the plane and if you would pause the video and grab your book and turn your book to page 451 there's a list of properties that deals with vector addition and scalar multiplication on page 451 of your book. Um, and there's eight of them but just to kind of run through a few of them you have properties such as vector u plus vector v is the same thing as vector v plus u. If you take vector u and you add it to the zero vector, you get vector u. If you um, multiply vector u by a scalar, you get the scalar times the vector, and so on. So if you would review those properties, please, on page 451, that's going to be extremely beneficial to you. And um, before we start with some of our examples, we need to look at what a unit vector is. Now, there are real-life applications that actually use vectors, and with these applications, sometimes it's useful to find a unit vector. And applications would be something like um, physics types problems, or those of you that go on to engineering, um, you're going to see vectors quite a bit in engineering. And what a unit vector is, is it's a vector that has the same direction as a given non-zero vector, um, and it could be v or u or w, whatever the vector is. So in order to find our unit vector, we're going to use the equation vector v divided by the magnitude or the length of vector v. So we're going to start out looking at example 4, and example 4 says to find a unit vector u in the same direction of v and we want to verify that the um, vector u has a magnitude of 1. And I didn't mention that in the previous slide, but in order for a unit vector to be a unit vector, um, it will have a magnitude of 1, and it has to be in the same direction as um, your v vector in this case. So in order to find our unit vector, we're going to take, so we'll say unit vector u, is going to be equal to taking the vector v, which we are given as 7, negative 3, and we're going to divide it by the magnitude of vector v, and the magnitude is found by taking the square root of 7, and remember that these little pointed brackets here means that we have a initial point at 0, 0, so it's really 7 minus 0, or 7, and we're going to square that, so we have 49 plus negative 3 minus 0 is negative 3, but then I'm going to square it, which is going to give me 9. So when I simplify this, then I end up with the um, vector 7, negative 3, divided by the square root of 58. Now, we can actually break this up, and we can write this as 7 divided by the square root of 58, comma, negative 3 divided by the square root of 58. Oops, and that should be a pointed bracket. Or, we could even factor out the 1 over 58, so this right here, I mean, I'll accept this or this, or if you wanted to factor out the 1 divided by the square root of 58 and write it like this, you may also do this as well. All three of these are equivalent. So that's the first part. We found a vector u that has the same direction, and now we want to verify that the magnitude is 1. So if I take... Um, and I'm just going to use this notation right here, and I want to prove that the magnitude of u equals 1. I'm going to take the magnitude of that, which means I'm going to take the square root of 7 divided by the square root of 58. I'm going to square that, and I'm going to add that to negative 3 divided by the square root of 58, and I'm going to square that. Well, when I go to simplify, this is going to give me the square root of 49 divided by 58 plus 9 divided by 58, 
which gives us the square root of 58 divided by 58, which equals 1. So we just proved that we had a unit vector then. Sometimes you will encounter unit vectors that look like um, 1, 0, or 0, 1. And these are what we call standard unit vectors. And they are usually represented by i for 1, 0, or j for 0, 1. And what these, re or what these look like, if we were to kind of little, do a little sketch here, the 1, 0 is going to be represented. We have an increment of 1, so this would be your j vector. And then we have the vector 1, 0, which is going to be your i vector. So i is really a, your x direction, j is really your y direction. Now, with a unit vector, if we take um, like a scalar vector, something like vector v, and we multiply that by our unit vectors, so if I do something like this, where I have vector v, and vector v is going to equal v sub 1, v sub 2, and if I take that and I go v sub 1 times 1, 0, and I add that to v sub 2 times 0, 1, this is really the same thing as saying v sub 1 i plus v sub 2 j, and the v sub 1 and v sub 2 are what we call the horizontal and vertical components of v. So then when we look at the sum as a whole, this is what we call a linear combination or a linear combo of vectors i and j. So example 5 says to let vector u be a vector with an initial point negative 2, 6 and a terminal point at negative 8, 3. We want to write vector u as a linear combination of standard unit vectors i and j. So the first thing we have to do is we actually have to find vector u. And vector u is going to be found by taking our terminal point and subtracting it from our initial point. So I really have negative 8 minus a negative 2, which gives me negative 6. And I have 3 minus 6, which is a negative 3. So now if I want to write this as a combination of standard unit vectors, all I have to do then is break this down so that I end up with a negative 6i plus, or I guess minus, be minus 3j. And this right here then is my linear combination of standard unit vectors in the i and j directions. And our final example of section 6.3 says to let vector u equal i plus j and vector v equals 5i minus 3j. We want to find 2u minus 3v. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to distribute the 5 and the 3 on each of my vectors. I'm sorry, the 2 and the 3 on each of my vectors. So what this does is this is going to give me 2 times i plus j minus 3 times 5i minus 3j, which is going to give us 2i plus 2j minus 15i plus 9j. And then we're going to have to combine our like terms. So i's, 2i minus 15i is negative 13i and 2i plus 9i becomes plus I'm sorry j 2j plus 9j equals 11j so this right here then would be your final answer and on that note I hope you guys have a good night and I will see you in class tomorrow